Big oil is entering nuclear, and it's a bigger deal than most people think. So let's talk about it. On September 2nd, the Open Group launched the Industrial Advanced Nuclear Consortium, which despite its very generic name, actually has a lot of influence about how industry and oil companies operate. This industrial forum has set standards for things in the oil and gas industry, like automation processes and interfaces. And now, they're setting their sights on nuclear. And there are two really interesting points about this. The first is, who is in the Open Group? And it's a founding group of industrial end users who are big heat and power buyers. Chevron, ConocoPhillips, ExxonMobil, Nucor, Rio Tinto, and Shell. And those names alone should pique your interest. It has my attention. Because what we're talking about here is actual aggregated demand. This is not vendors pushing their reactor that somebody should buy. These are actual end users that want power and want a specific way of getting it. But let's take a step back. What is the Open Group actually proposing here? They're not asking for a PPA like some of the recent deals we've seen. What they're after is something a little bit more fundamental. And I would argue that it's actually even more important than signing an individual PPA. Because what the Open Group does, and has been able to do in other areas of its industry, is set standards that other companies follow and adhere to. And this makes it possible then to have a known interface that everybody can deal with. So rather than having 10,000 different types of plugs, interfaces, and ports, we now have USB-C. The Open Group didn't set the USB-C standard, but they do set their process requirements and interface requirements for within their own industry. And they have been remarkably successful in getting this implemented. They have a group called the Open Process Automation Forum, which has had great success in deploying the Open Process Automation Standard, and is used so widely within their industry, it is effectively the de facto standard. So what they're proposing to do with nuclear energy is exactly the same thing. The primary objectives of the consortium include standardizing interfaces and sourcing terminology, adopting risk-appropriate design practices, and developing open frameworks and business guidelines. Essentially, the Open Group wants to create a standard framework that every nuclear company would operate with when they're dealing with industrial customers. And while the Open Group hasn't specified exactly what they intend to include in these standards, we can take some educated guesses based on what they've said in their press release. Basically, the concept is we would have a standardized interface between nuclear and industry. On the left, we have the advanced nuclear plant, and on the right, we have an industrial site. The nuclear plant, of course, produces heat in the form of steam, high temperature fluids, or supercritical CO2. It could also produce power and medium and high voltage, and there would be some sort of plant control and safety systems. On the right at the industrial site, there are process units and utilities, electrical systems, and site digital control systems. Basically, the industrial needs that are using the output from the nuclear reactor. And then standardizing the interface means we'd start to specify things like what is the thermal interface, what are the electrical interfaces, what data and controls are required, where is the safety boundary and what QA requirements are there. So just like with a USB-C connection, we would specify the style, format, flow, quality, characteristics, languages, terminology, how resilient it has to be, if there are any standard temperature and pressure ranges, what type of frequencies and trip signals would be allowed, what kind of timing, cybersecurity, where different envelopes begin and end, and even things like commercial terms that can include uptime, guarantees, and more. What this does is it allows an industrial site to put out a request for a bid using standard terminology and format that individual nuclear designers would then be able to bid on, knowing exactly what the information is that they need to provide, in what format, and what their plant characteristics need to look like. So rather than having every bid and design be a complete custom job, the nuclear designers are then essentially providing a commodity, much like steel or natural gas, rather than a complete customized solution. And I cannot overstate how important this actually is. Standardized design, terminology, and processes are absolutely key to getting multiple reactors built reliably and inexpensively. If every company is building their own USB-C, that complicates and slows down the entire process. The regulator then has to understand and review multiple different types of designs. The end industrial user then needs to adapt their processes depending on which bidder is going to win. This adds tremendous cost and complexity to any of these projects. Currently, nuclear is not used at all in industrial processes in the United States. The vast majority comes from natural gas and oil, with a small amount being used from actual electric sources. And different temperature ranges are needed for different processes. At the high end, glass and cement manufacturing, as well as steel making and methane reforming. Lower down, we have things like pulp and paper production, district heating, and seawater desalination. These are all real needs that are currently mostly being met with natural gas and oil. And existing reactors, as well as developing reactors that operate at higher temperatures, are going to be well positioned to support these, if they can get the interfaces correct. And that's why having a standard that everybody follows is so important. Because if a paper factory knows exactly what their interface is going to be with a nuclear plant, then they can put out a specification and a bid, and the vendors know exactly how to respond.
Earlier this year, X Energy made a construction permit application for its XE100 high temperature gas reactor at the Dow Chemical Facility in Texas. This would be one of the first uses of nuclear energy in an industrial capacity with a private customer. There's no word yet on whether or not this project would use the new standard, but it could set the precedent that would be used in other projects in the future. Because a large consortium like the Open Group coming in and saying, we want a nuclear standard, demonstrates that there is real demand from the industrial side for nuclear energy, not just vendors pushing their ideas for paper reactors. The CEO of the Open Group said there is an urgent need to better leverage nuclear energy to address the application of heat and power solutions. By bringing together large industrial end users and the supplier community, we can draw on the huge amount of industry expertise in project delivery, reduce costs, and schedule uncertainty, and effectively deliver nuclear projects that serve the needs of the industry. The NRC also responded, saying the Nuclear Regulatory Commission looks forward to engaging with the Industrial Advanced Nuclear Consortium to embed appropriate nuclear safety concepts in the standardization and better understand their business needs and plans. So while this is actually a major development, there are a few things that we need to keep in mind. Standards can take a long time to develop, often multiple years. And if there's anything we know about the nuclear industry, it's not exactly fast. And having a large group of potential customers say, this is the standard that we want to follow, could be the kick that the nuclear industry needs to actually get moving. If you found this video interesting, please do like and subscribe. It helps out the channel enormously. And thanks for watching.